What's up, peeps? It's me. I'm back. And um, I'm just coming to you today because um, there's some information that I think you need to know about that I didn't even know about until I heard it, uh, I heard it from one of our leaders in the new black media. Uh, because the white media, the liberal white media is not talking about this. They're not sharing this story. They're not giving it any coverage. So it's something that I think um, we need to know, especially in the climate that we're in right now. And, 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 and we bring a lot of this information to you so that black people can understand, especially foundational black Americans, can understand that they're re we are really in the middle of a race war. We've been in the middle of a race, race war for years and, and black folks just don't seem to get that. And, 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 you know, we pay attention to all of these black puppets and all these black bootlicks and these coons that they put out in front of us to try to smooth things over and to try to make us think that everything is all right and to try to make us feel like, you know, uh, our struggle is no different from anybody else's struggle and that kind of stuff. And black people actually buy into that. You actually buy, buy into that and you actually believe that that's the case when that's not the case at all. You know, you got folks like Herschel Walker and, and, and Larry Elder and, and, you know, and, and all the celebrities and all of these folks that come out. You understand what I'm saying? And, 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 and they, now they're preaching against reparations and talking about how reparations is divisive and black people don't need res, uh, reparations and all that. But it was OK for black taxpaying dollars to pay reparations to all of these other groups. The Japanese, uh, uh, Native Americans, uh, well, the Native American Indians, quote unquote, uh, um, the Jews. It's all right for our taxpayer dollars to go to Israel in, in, in the sums of billions of dollars every year. But black folks who, were, who, who have been treated the worst and who have had the worst crime committed against them in this nation, we don't deserve reparations. So, you know, it, 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 we got to wake up. We got to wake up. We, we got to wise up. You understand what I'm saying? And we've got to stop with all of this trying to unify with everybody. Like Tariq says, unity is overrated. You know, even unity within our own community is overrated. We don't need to unite with coons. We don't need to unite with black bootlicks. We don't need to unite with white puppets of uh, with black puppets of white supremacy we don't need to unite with those folks we don't need to unite with uh, uh, uh with black immigrants i don't care where they coming from if they coming over here with the intention and the purpose of undermining us you understand what i'm saying and joining white supremacy against us and that's what a lot of them do not all of them but that's what a lot of them do so not only do we have a homegrown domestic coon problem, we got a coon problem with black immigrants that, that are coming over here. Only difference is we as foundational Americans will call out our own coons. We will call them out. We will deal with them. We will put them on blast. We will put them on the, on the summer jam screen and we will keep on going and keep on going and keep on going until we make their voices completely ineffective, ineffective. But the black immigrant class won't do that. They won't call out their own coons. They won't alert us and warn us and let us know ahead of time, okay, you might have trouble with this one or you might have trouble with that one. No, what they do is they join forces and they try to hide and try to cover for their coons. We don't do that. We've been calling out our own coons for years. So we have got to start looking out for ourselves. We have got to start looking out for our own group because nobody else is interested in us. Nobody else is interested in what's going on with foundational black Americans. Nobody's interested in what's going on in our communities. Nobody's interested in saving our lives. Tariq said something very important on one of his broadcasts, and that was... With all of these white folks and all these other groups and everything that you got that would go out and that will protest and that will walk around and tote around Black Lives Matter signs and, 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 and wear Black Lives Matter t-shirts and all of that kind of stuff. Where are those people? Where are those people that are a part of the dominant society and that are a part of the Asian American society or a part of any other group? Where are those people when we really need them? 
Where are they in these courtrooms? Where are they, you know, when, 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 when some black, innocent black person, male or female, has been shot down by the race soldiers and you got 12 uh, 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 jurors that can decide whether or not this person needs to be punished and deserves to be punished for the crime that they committed? Where are they to say that black lives matter, but then they turn around and say that this officer was justified in what he did? Or, or they'll send a George, a George Zimmerman home and say that he was not guilty of murdering Trayvon Martin. But then those same people will turn around a, a, a year or two later and, and go out in the street and turn around with a Black Lives Matter sign. We don't need you in the street protesting with us. We don't need you in the street starting riots and, 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 and breaking windows and starting fires and all of that kind of stuff, which we eventually will end up being blamed for. That's not where we need you. We need you in these courtrooms. We need you in classrooms. Where's the teachers the, in the dominant society to call out that teacher that we just uh, learned about in Florida that was teaching history all wrong and talking about white folks didn't whoop slaves and, and giving a totally different uh, definition of the word of, of the, the so-called n-word, the word nigger. So where are you when we really need you? So that's some of the stuff that we're going to talk about today. I hope everybody's doing well. I hope everybody's staying safe. And I hope everybody's being smart. I hope everybody is, 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 is staying on code. And if you're not on code, get on code. And if you don't know what it means to be on code, being on code. Hold on, y'all. They are expecting more power on the... Being on code simply means that you regulate... Your conduct, your code of conduct, you regulate your actions and, and your speech accordingly. You don't do anything or say anything that's going to negatively impact the foundational black American community as a whole, as a collective. You don't put yourself above your community. Which means if you've got somebody in the dominant society or whatever group offering you money or offering you butter biscuits as they call it or whatever the case may be for you to come out and speak negatively against black folk, speak negatively against black men, speak negatively against the black community, speak negatively against reparations for black folks. Yes, that may benefit you alone and your immediate family but it does nothing but harm the black community like you got these black folks out now talking about yeah we need to stop all the violence and we need to uh, 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 unite with the Asian Americans and all of this kind of stuff there is no planned organized to attack by the collective of foundational black Americans against Asians there isn't now. There never has been. We've never targeted anybody like that. We've never, as a group, as a whole, as a collective, we've never strategized and sit down and planned to target any other group of people. Although we were the ones that had every right to do it. We've always just simply wanted to be left alone. Leave us alone. Leave us alone. We'll work our own shit out. Just leave us alone. Stop killing us. Stop discriminating against us. Stop, you know, stop, stop harassing us. Stop murdering us. Stop brutalizing us. Stop doing everything that you can to keep us in poverty and to keep us on the bottom. Leave us alone and we'll be just fine. We'll work it out. You don't bother us. We won't bother you. But you got black folks now actually coming out supporting this bullshit and going along with this bullshit and helping to push this narrative that black folks are targeting uh, 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 Asian Americans for hate crimes and violence and all of this kind of stuff. Simply because of the actions of a few uh, 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 folks out there that might be doing whatever they're doing. 
Because if you're talking about Asian Americans being robbed, okay, we're in the middle of middle of a quote unquote pandemic. People are out of work. People don't know how they're gonna eat. People can't pay their bills. You understand what I'm saying? Folks are not being able to work. Whatever the case may be. Anytime you're in a situation like this, and then you got all this lockdown and all this, you got all of these folks, and they've all it's already been proven statistically. Uh, 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 mental illness is on the rise. Depression is on the rise. Suicide is on the rise joblessness, unemployment, all of those things are on the rise. When you get that kind of situation, crime is going to be on the rise in every community across the board. So Asians are not the only people that are being robbed. Folks are getting robbed left and right. But they're not reporting on it on what's happening to other groups. They're not reporting on it because they want to push this narrative of black folks targeting Asian Americans for hate crimes and violence. Robbery is not a hate crime. Folks don't usually uh, rob people based on race. If they do, it's because they think because of your race, you got more money. It's all about the money. It has nothing to do with your race or the color of your skin or whatever. Robbery is about tangibles. Robbery is about what can I get up off of you. So anyway, let me slow down so I can bring it back into order. But um, there's, some, there, there, there's some things going on that you may not know about because uh, mainstream, mainstream media, that liberal white media is not reporting on it. They're not giving it any coverage. And the reason why they're not getting it, giving it any coverage is because they don't want you to know, again, what's really going on. Just like I said in the, in the last uh, uh, broadcast that we just did about the, the, the black mother. That was killed by the two so-called Trump-loving uh, uh, white folks here down here in North Carolina. See, that's what's going on behind the scenes while uh, 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 publicly in, in, in mainstream media, in the mainstream, nationally, they're trying to push this thing about Asian Americans and blacks. Because they don't want you to know what's really going on. They don't want you to know that the, the, that the victims of targeting are the same victims that they've always been. Black folks. They don't want you to know that. And statistically, we are the group that is highest in hate crimes against us. I'll let y'all do the research for that. But see, while we watching uh, 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 this mess, this narrative that they're trying to push about blacks targeting Asian Americans, this is the kind of stuff that's going on behind the scenes that mainstream media is not going to show you. Why? Because it doesn't work towards their narrative. It doesn't, excuse me, it doesn't help to push their narrative, okay? So I got this out of um, WANE.com, News Crime. Court doc, murder suspect returned to gas station to fire on teens in vehicle. This was post, uh, uh, first posted February the 17th, 2020. It was updated February the 19th, 2021. Well, it was first posted February 17th, 2021. And it was updated February 19th, 2021. Fort Wayne, Indiana. A man has been arrested on charges of two counts of murder for gunning down three young men. Now they, they yes, they were young men, but they were teens. Two of them were teens. Hold on, y'all. I'm gonna have to close. Yeah, I'm gonna have to cut that one off. Hello. Yeah, I had to cut that one off because that, that 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 video kept popping up. We'll get back to that later. Um, two of them were 19, one of them was 20. So two of them were teenagers. The other one was actually what you could call a young man, a young man. But two of them were 19 years old, so they were still teenagers. 
Uh, a man has been arrested on charges of two counts of murder for gunning down three young men at a Fort Wayne gas station Wednesday night. He went there to buy cigarettes, but a verbal confrontation erupted into gunfire a short time later. No, a verbal confrontation erupted into murder a short time later. And of course, uh, uh, um, the victims were black and the dude doing the, 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 the killing was a white dude. Joseph D. Buzzard, Bozard, 32, was also arrested on charges of aggravated battery for the incident that unfolded at the Shell gas station at 3170 East State Boulevard at Hubson Road around 7.20 p.m. Thursday afternoon, the Allen County Coroner's Office identified the two who were killed as Anderson Reddick, 19, of Fort Wayne, and Joshua Cole Cooper, 19, also of Fort Wayne. Both Reddick and Cooper were pronounced dead at the scene, and an autopsy determined they died from multiple gunshot wounds. Jalen Rice, 20, is still in the hospital fighting for his life, so he suffered life-threatening wounds. And he's the only 20-year-old. The two 19-year-olds uh, uh, were pronounced dead at the scene from multiple gunshot wounds. Fort Wayne police were dispatched to the area on reports of a problem unknown, according to, police, according to the police activity log. As officers were on the way, a shooting was reported at the gas station. Responding officers found a vehicle crashed into a snowbank along Hudson Road about a half a mile south with three males inside suffering from apparent gunshot wounds. Two were pronounced dead at the scene by medics. Another was taken into an area hospital in critical condition. According to a probable cause affidavit released Thursday, Bozard arrived at the gas station in a red silver in a red Chevrolet Silverado pickup and bought a pack of cigarettes. Inside the store, Bozart got into some kind of verbal confrontation with three young black male subjects. Subjects. They call them subjects. That's usually what they call people when they think they may be suspect or, or that they they may have committed some kind of crime. They call them subjects. Why they couldn't why did why they couldn't just say some kind of verbal confrontation with three young black men? Why couldn't they say that? Why did they have to be subjects? You see what I'm saying? Already trying to set it up that somehow or another these young black men had done something wrong. These young black men had done something criminal, and that's the reason why two of them are dead and one of them is fighting for his life. Okay? Who were in the store shopping. After leaving the store, su surveillance video showed Bozart circle the three whom he'd been arguing with with his truck and almost hit one of them in the process, according to the affidavit. The pickup then drove off eastbound on State Boulevard. Two minutes later, the same truck returned to the gas station and pulled up directly behind the, uh, the, the other vehicle, the vehicle that the three young black men were in. The affidavit said, Bozart got out of his truck and Brixley walked up to the driver's side door and fired a handgun inside. The car drove off as Bozart fired and Bozart ran back to his truck and pursued southbound. The surveillance camera shows, according to the affidavit, Wayne's 15, Brianna Brownlee, reached out to the, to the Shell gas station and asked for the surveillance video. According to the manager, every copy of the video was retrieved by the Fort Wayne police and is being used as evidence. Shell cases were found both around the gas pump and around the crashed vehicle a short ways away. The affidavit said. So, so he planned this because he left the store. And then he came back. They said he came back two minutes later. So two minutes wouldn't be time enough for you to go home, go inside your home, and get a weapon. So he probably already had the weapon in his vehicle, in his truck. So he goes back and he decides that he's going to put some bullets in these three young black men. And that's exactly what he did. So not only did he shoot at them and shoot them at the gas station, he pursued them when they left. And they found shell cases around the, the crashed car. 
After, after shooting, police released an image of the suspect. Bozard was tracked to a home in the, two, in the 22,000 block of Laverne Avenue. Negotiators tried to contact him inside for almost two hours with no response before a tactical officer shot a chemical agent in the home and he surrendered peacefully. So see, no matter what they do, no matter what crimes they commit, you understand what I'm saying? No matter how many people they have murdered, they are always apprehended peacefully. There's never a shootout, not unless they start shooting first and the police find themselves in a situation where they have no choice but to shoot back. But if it's any kind of way that law enforcement can avoid killing these white suspects, they're going to find a way. They're going to find a way to avoid killing them. They're going to find a way to avoid that. Because, see, all of a sudden, the I feared for my life goes out the window. Although you know that this man is armed. Because this man has just shot three people. So you know this man is armed. You know this man will shoot and kill. But all of a sudden, that fear for my life thing just goes straight out the door. Bozart declined to speak with officers after he was taken into custody, the affidavit said. He was booked into the Allen County Jail on two charges of murder and one count of aggravated battery. Ag aggravated battery. Not murder in the first degree with malice and forethought because he had, he, he had, he had, he had left. He had went away. And he came back. So he came back with the intent to kill. That makes it first degree murder. Because at that point, it becomes premeditated. Now, if he hadn't left the scene and had started busting on them as soon as he went out the store and never left the scene, that would be different. But the fact that he left the scene, the fact that he got in his vehicle, left the scene and came back, that's premeditation. Right? An aggravated battery. Aggravated battery and you got a man shot that's fighting for his life. That should be attempted murder. If it was these three black men, look, these black teenage boys, if it was them versus this white man, and the white man was the one that, that was dead, you best well believe all three of them would have been charged with first degree murder. No ifs, ands, or buts about it. They would have been hit with the, with, with the highest, hardest possible felony that they could be hit with. And all three of them would have been charged. Not just the one who pulled the trigger, but all three would have been charged with the exact same thing. That's the reason why we're all wondering why nobody in the case with the Capitol riots, why nobody has been charged with any kind of murder. But we got a dead police officer and a couple of their own rioters died. But nobody's being charged with any kind of murder. Wayne's 15 Facebook received many comments and shares from viewers devastated by the incident. It's heartbreaking. It's just heartbreaking. As officers, we are parents. We are mothers. We are fathers. We are brothers and sisters. And these things do affect us, says Sergeant Sophia Rosalie Scaterna, Fort Wayne Police Spokeswoman. But we have a job to do. And I think the community expects us to. We will continue in the professional manner that we do. This woman added that officers have a soft spot for families that are left behind after their loved one is taken away. That's why our officers are out for countless hours, 20 to 26 hours in a row, trying to get these cases wrapped up so that loved ones can get justice. Okay, what does that anyway? Inside, Boza, inside Bozart's home, police found one 9mm handgun and one uh, um, 380 caliber handgun, the affidavit said. Hubson Road was closed to traffic as police in investigate the incident. 
So even in this situation, even in this situation where you got two dead, you understand what I'm saying? You got a, a clear a video surveillance showing him leaving the scene and coming back. And then not only firing on them at the gas station, but pursuing them when they tried to drive away. And you got the shell cases that prove that he shot inside the vehicle once it had crashed. He's still only charged with two counts of murder, not even capital murder, just two counts of murder, and one count of aggravated battery. Just like Chad Wheeler obviously intended to kill Aaliyah, his, his ex-girlfriend, he obviously attended, uh, uh, intended to kill her. That's the reason why he made the statement, oh, so you're still alive. But we see no attempted murder charge. So see, this is what's going on. And like I said, you won't find this on mainstream media. I looked for it. And I mean, I had to look and I had to look and then I had to look some more. And, and the only way you're going to find it is you're going to find it on these little off the grid um, sources. You're not going to find it on any mainstream media sources. Because this is not something that mainstream media wants the masses to know about. You understand what I'm saying? Why? Because now the mainstream media wants to put the focus back on black folks as the thugs, as the criminals who are now targeting these 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 poor, uh, 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 helpless uh, 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 Asian Americans that have been discriminated against in this country. You understand what I'm saying? And, and, and have experienced xenophobia in this country and all of that. Two of them were 19, the two 19 year olds are dead. They gone. And the 20 year old is fighting for his life. And it's obvious that the video surveillance footage of, you know, them inside the store and all of that obviously didn't show whether the teens were doing anything wrong or anything that they didn't have any business doing because you can best well believe if they had been doing anything wrong or if they had started the confrontation or whatever the case may be, you can best well believe me these media outlets would let you know that because, see, that would give them, that's the reason why they tried to call them subjects you understand what I'm saying? Instead of just saying three young black men. It's because the, uh, the, the objective is still to try to protect this white man as much as possible. But the, but the video footage doesn't support that these young black men did anything wrong. So, and because of that, Mainstream media isn't going to tell you about this story because there's nothing in this that mainstream media can use to push their narrative again that black folks are criminals and black folks are thugs and black folks are violent. You understand what I'm saying? And black folks are racist and black folks are xenophobic and black folks are homophobic, transphobic and everything else. See, there's nothing in this story that they can use to push those narratives. So that's the reason why mainstream media ain't going to tell you about this. But y'all need to talk about this. Y'all need to get this story. Y'all need to share this story on your social medias. You understand what I'm saying? And y'all need to talk about this. Because black folks need to know what's really going on. Black folks need to know that, that nothing has changed. You understand what I'm saying? There has been no shift. The target of murder, the target of brutality, the target of oppression, the target of all of that is still the same target as always been. And that's us, foundational black Americans. So y'all make sure, because I will have this story, uh, because, it, it, because it is so hard 
to find any information on this. I will have a stuff, a couple of stories about this, a couple of articles about this, uh, listed in the description box. You understand what I'm saying? And y'all need to read these stories. Y'all need to share these links. Y'all need to get on social media and let social media know that this is what's really going on. Not black folks targeting Asians because I still haven't heard anything about uh, anybody black killing an Asian. I haven't heard about quite a few Asians killing black folks, but I still haven't heard anything about any black people killing Asians. I certainly haven't heard anything about the police just randomly uh, shooting Asians down in the street and going in Asian homes, killing them, and going in Asian businesses, killing them, and all of that. I still ain't heard that either. And again, whatever crimes, whether it be robbery or, 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 or whether it be running and pushing down some old folks or whatever, whatever crimes are being committed against Asians, the folks committing these crimes are being arrested and I guarantee you they will be punished. So it's not like they just getting off scot-free. It's not like. You know, they go into court and, and, uh, and, 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 and not, fight, not being punished. Or it's not like, you know, uh, DAs and prosecutors are deciding, well, it ain't nothing here. They was justified in what they was doing, so we just going to let them go. We're not going to press any charges. So it's, us, it's up to us to make sure that the masses of black people understand that, 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 that nothing has shifted. There hasn't been a shift. It's not like the, 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 the bullseye is, 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 is all of a sudden shifted from black folks to Asian folks. No, the bullseye is still right where it always has been. We are still the number one target. We are still public enemy number one in this country. And black folks don't need to be fooled by the Herschel Walkers and, 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 and the Mr. Fabs. You understand what I'm saying? And all of the and the Larry Elders and the Candace Owenses and all of these bootlicks and coons that keep coming forward uh, 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 aligning themselves and supporting white supremacy while they're selling their own folks out. There has been no shift. We are still the only group that's in the crosshairs of white supremacy. And the story about the black pregnant woman and this story here about these three teens that were shot and killed, uh, 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 the, the two of them murdered and, and one of them fighting for his life over, uh, uh, over a simple verbal confrontation in a gas station. But see, the white liberal me uh, uh, media wants to shift the attention. See, this is all about shifting the attention. You understand what I'm saying? The crosshairs uh, 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 might not shift, but they want to make sure that they shift the attention. And we get ready to get into what, 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 why they want to shift the attention. Okay. Now, this story right here is out of Yahoo News and is real important. So, here we go. Uh, it's from USA Today by Adam Tamborin uh, from, the, from the Nashville, Te Te Texian, yeah, Nashville, Tennessee, Thursday, February 18th, 2021. In a blistering opinion Wednesday, no, let me read the caption first. Judge says Capitol riot suspects Zip Tie Guy and his mom must stay in custody. Okay, Zip Tie Guy was the guy that you was that you saw in the chamber jumping over the um the uh, the railing with um the zip ties, I think he had, uh, it was either an actual firearm or a stun gun on his, uh, uh, on his holster, on his, on his hip, and he had on um, a bulletproof vest. And he had that whole big bundle of zip ties in his hand, right? That's zip tie guy. Well, his mom was actually there too, okay? So let's, let's, let's read this. 
In a blistering opinion Wednesday, a federal judge said a Nashville man and his mother, charged in the deadly riot at the U.S. Capitol, must stay in custody because their release on bail would threaten national security. Eric Munchell, dubbed Zip Tie Guy, in the aftermath of the January 6th insurrection, and his mother, Lisa Eisenhart, Eisenhart, will be held until their trials. Federal prosecutors say they were part of the pro-Trump mob that stormed the Capitol to stop lawmakers from certifying the election of President Joe Biden. Investigators identified Munchell 30 and um, Eisenhart 56 in video footage from the riot. See, they, 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 can, they, they can identify all these people. Remember, uh, 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 days after the whole thing went down, they had the police out with that bullshit talking about, could you help us identify? And if you have any information uh, as to the identities of these people, uh, uh, we need your help and all of this. And they got all kind of facial rec recognition programs and software and, and all kinds of technology to find out who these folks were. And of course, a lot of them were unmasked. A lot of them were posting all kinds of pictures and everything on their social media. So it wasn't hard to find out who these these people were. Investigators identified Munchell 30 and Eisenhart 56 in video footage from the riot. Munchell was seen inside the Capitol carrying plastic handcuffs, zip ties, wearing a tactical vest with a taser hosted on his right hip and an iPhone strapped to his chest, facing, for, facing outward. They're saying it was a taser. Other folks are saying that it was actually a firearm. But, anywho, the pair faces federal charges of obstructing an official proceeding, unlawful injury, and violent injury. That's it. Did you hear what I just said? Now, this man walking around with zip ties that, of course, police officers use when they run out of handcuffs. They'll give zip ties. You understand what I'm saying? And of course, people use zip ties to abduct folk and, and stuff like that. But these people are only charged with obstructing an official proceeding, unlawful entry, and violent entry, injury. I mean, entry, entry. That's all they charged with. But you got a dead police officer and other dead folks as a result of, of, of their actions on that day, but you don't see them corralling everybody together and charging them en masse with murder, insurrection, sedition, none of that. Okay. A Nashville-based, we'll, we'll get to it in a minute. We're going to get to what's, what's really going on. A Nashville-based magistrate judge initially said the, the pair should be released while they await trial, but that order was delayed until a hearing could take place in Washington, D.C. The pair was subsequently taken there for arraignment. U.S. District Judge Royce C. Lamberth of Washington, D.C. officially reversed the magistrate judge's decision. Because you have to understand, all of them lower judges was, was throwing out all these little bitty bails and all of this, little $25,000 bails, $10,000 bails, and all of this kind of stuff. None of them are being charged with anything heavy, except for maybe the guy that, that had the pipe bombs and all that ammunition and all this kind of stuff. But the rest of them, none of them are really being charged with anything uh, heavy. Most of them are being charged with misdemeanors. You understand what I'm saying? And then you had the woman that was up there that was a part of the whole thing that asked the judge, could she go on vacation, basically? Uh, she was talking about a work-related trip, but we really knew it was just a, va a vacation to Mexico, and he granted her permission to go. Remember, the first tenet of white supremacy is to protect whiteness at all costs. Whiteness and the exercise of whiteness, the exercise, the exercising of white privilege is not to be punished. It's your right as far as they're concerned. 
as far as white supremacy is concerned, it's your right to exercise your whiteness and to exercise the privileges and the benefits that you have because of your whiteness. That's not to be punished. Now, if a few people happen, if a few people happen to get killed, or if a few people happen to die, or whatever the case may be, while you exercising that, that's all right. If we punish you, it'll be no more than a slap on the wrist. You understand what I'm saying? But 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 it's all right. But this judge was like, because see, you see, the magistrate, but the magistrate was like, just like with the rest of them, send them all home, release them, they'll be all right, send them all home. But this uh, district judge uh, had a different opinion. U.S. District Judge Roy C. Lambert of Washington, D.C. officially reversed the magistrate judge's decision, saying that because Munchell and Eisenhart remained dedicated to their cause, they might act against the federal government again if they were allowed out of custody. Lambert's opinion quoted George Washington's farewell address and argued efforts to disrupt Congress and the peaceful transfer of power threatens the republic itself. The judge dismissed the defense's claim that Munchell and Eisenhart were peaceful protesters as detached from reality. And then it's got the, uh, the court documents here that you can see. Muncho has indicated that he would be willing to act against Congress again, and nothing short of pretrial detention can prevent him from doing so, Lambert wrote in his opinion, ordering pretrial detention. According to federal prosecutors, Eisenhart said she'd rather die than live under oppression. Now you have to understand. As far as white folks is concerned, as far as the dominant society here in America is concerned, be, uh, 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 being asked or being told to put on a mask is oppression to them. That's what she means by living under oppression. That's the reason why you had so many of them storming uh, 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 state capitals and all of that during the summer. And, 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 and because they didn't want to wear masks, being asked to close your business down. You understand what I'm saying? Or, 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 or at least regulate and social distance and all of this kind of stuff. As far as they're concerned, that's oppression. Because they're not allowed to do exactly what they want to do in their whiteness. So their white privilege, their white right to do whatever the hell they want to do, they feel like it's being denied them and that's oppression to them. Let me read that again. According to federal prosecutors, Eisenhart, this is the mama, said she'd rather die than live under oppression. Lambert noted her position as a self-avowed would-be martyr in his order. Because, see, that's what they turned that Ashley Babbitt or Bobbitt or whatever her name was, the one that got shot up there, that's what they tried to turn her into. They tried to turn her into a martyr for the cause. Eisenhart's willingness to die for her cause indicates that release conditions may be even less effective for her. So they're trying to say that she's more radical. You understand what I'm saying? And most sold out to the cause than even her son with his zip ties. Lambert said, if Eisenhart does not fear the ultimate consequence, the consequences for disobeying release conditions are unlikely to deter her. And see, that's what white, that, that's white supremacy. We die hard white supremacists are willing to die for their cause. That's the difference between them and us. All of a sudden, we didn't got we didn't become the most scariest people. All of a sudden, we ain't willing to die for nothing except for maybe a pair of shoes. You understand what I'm saying, or 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 or, 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 or some kind of old gold Jesus chain, or some kind of stupid shit like that. But when it comes to our freedom, when it comes to being oppressed, 
when it comes to being to, to being just to just having basic human rights, we're not willing to die for that. White supremacy is white supremacy is willing to die. They are willing to lay down their lives for the cause. They consider it an honor to lay down their lives for the cause of whiteness, white privilege, white supremacy. And to have the right to, to, to pass the legacy of white supremacy down to their children and their children's children and, and so on and so forth. They willing to die for that. And they don't care who they have to go up against, whether they have to go up against a government, whether they have to go up against an army, whether they have to go up against another group of people. They don't care who they have to go up against to protect white supremacy. That's why they all have gone, gotten uh, 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 united. All of these different groups that used to be separate and used to have their, and they used to operate in their own little separate spaces and their own little separate corners and all of that. All these white uh, uh, supremacy group and white nationalists and white extremists and the neo Nazis and all of that. All of them used to um, used to operate and function in their own little divided individual spaces. But that's what Charlottesville was all about. Unite the right. Bringing all of those groups together in their common cause. Because even if all of their ideologies weren't exactly the same, you understand what I'm saying? They, they, they all had one common cause, and that was whiteness. Protecting whiteness. Protecting white supremacy. So they set aside all their little individual differences and little individual differences in ideology and thinking and, and ways of doing things. They set all of that aside to unite on that one commonality. Whiteness. But black folk can't do that. We can't set all this other stuff, uh, all this other stuff aside and, and come together and unite on that one commonality. Blackness. We're all black. And we've all been oppressed at some point or the other by white supremacy. So what the judge is saying here is, okay, if she, if, if, if she don't mind dying, you understand what I'm saying? If she don't mind uh, 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 and don't fear the ultimate consequence of her actions, which is death, she certainly ain't going to worry about disobeying no doggone release conditions. And then, too, this judge, of course, they're not, they're not going to say that. But then, too, this judge has taken a look at the Kyle Rittenhouse situation. And how they released, gave him a bail, and then released him on bail. And then he immediately went about the process. You understand what I'm saying? Of disobeying those release conditions, those bail conditions and requirements. And the judge in that case, with Kyle, he 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 denied the uh the the, the motion from the prosecutors. To, 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 to send out another search, uh, uh, another arrest warrant for Cal. So he just out there living his best life. But he said on the front of that, uh, um, that t-shirt when he was at the bar with the other white supremacists. He said with the, with the, uh, Proud Boys. He said on the front of that t-shirt, free as fuck. So this judge ain't even gonna find himself in that position. He's he not going to even find himself in a position where his decision can be questioned. If these folks decide that they beca that because he released them, that they're going to go and be involved in some more shit. Now, he's not worried about them being involved in, you know, some kind of shit against black folks. Or some other type of shit. He's not, he not concerned about that. He's talking about they are a, a threat to national security.
But I read this story because this is what I want to let y'all know. This is, and, 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 and I'm sure some of you have already thought about this, but for those of you who haven't, give this some thought. Now, we have had Asian police officers killing innocent folk. Peter Liang, Akai Gurley, the whole Asian community got together. Didn't make no difference which part of Asia they were from or which uh, culture or whatever. They all banded together in, the, in droves. You understand what I'm saying? Got their money together and everything, and they got that situation handled, right? Uh, we see how they treated black women in the nail salons, the beauty supplies. We see how they sometimes treat black folks in the restaurants, how they, you know, treat black folks when black folks come in and do any kind of business with them. Uh, we've now talked about the history of the Asian American and the Asian American businesses in the black community that started right after uh, 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 Reconstruction when free blacks uh, uh, chose to do business with the Asians instead of doing business with their previous slave owners because their previous slave owners were charging them these, these exorbitant prices and trying to keep them in debt. So we, we, we've now discussed that and the history of it. Um, we see how the folks over in China were treating the black Africans over there. You understand what I'm saying? When this whole uh, 19 thing hit, throwing them out of their apartments, they got to sleep on the street. You understand what I'm saying? All, all kinds of stuff. Beating them up, uh, just, just treating them horribly, right? But... That wasn't a problem for America. Of course that wasn't a problem for America because public enemy number one was being treated exactly how public enemy number one is supposed to be treated. You understand what I mean? You keep them oppressed. You understand what I'm saying? You brutalize them at every, at, at every instance. You understand what I'm saying? You take advantage of them and, and you dehumanize them uh, in every chance that you get. But now all of a sudden, and it sure is convenient that now all of a sudden, after Biden took the White House, now all of a sudden, the focus has been shifted off of all of these white folks and all of these white supremacists and all of these white supremacist groups and all of this kind of stuff that participated in uh, the coup on the Capitol. All of a sudden, all of the attention has been shifted off of them and back onto black folks as the thugs, the violent, the violent ones. You understand what I'm saying? The terrorists, because basically that's what they're trying to say, that black folks are now terrorizing the Asian American community and all of that. So now we're the terrorists. We're the thugs. We're the violent ones because you got to remember, you understand what I'm saying? From January 6th up until, you know, maybe just a, a, a week or two ago, that's what these white folks were being called. They were being called thugs. They were being called a, a, a deadly violent mob. They were being called domestic terrorists. You understand what I'm saying? All on social media and, and, and all their on YouTube and all these other places on social media. You had white folks uh, uh, demanding that these people be arrested and charged with murder. You understand what I'm saying? That they be charged with sedition, insurrection, uh, all of this kind of stuff. So the whole world was in a, a whole world was in an uproar about this, and the whole world was paying attention to what was going to happen with this whole Capitol Hill thing. You know, you had folks in Congress talking about there needs to be an investigation, and was this an inside job? You understand what I'm saying? And 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 and, and were the Capitol Police are complicit in this? You understand what I'm saying? And what should be done about it? And all of that. So they had to do something to shift the attention off of the white folks as thugs and domestic terrorists and violent. And they had to do something to shift the, the, the attention off of them and what they participated in 
on the Capitol, now all of a sudden you got everybody talking about white supremacy. You got everybody mentioning white supremacy. You got everybody talking about we need to do something about white supremacy and all of that. So a, th 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 there had to be a shifting of the attention. So Biden, while talking about white supremacy, you understand what I'm saying? Talking about what happened to George Floyd and how George Floyd was murdered by white supremacy did the perfect switch. And, and, and most of you didn't even see it. He used a black man, a black man's situation, a black man's murder at the hand of white supremacy to take the focus off of white supremacy and put it back on black folks. And he did it through that, that memorandum for the Asian Americans and Pacific Islanders. He used black folks a black man being murdered, brutalized and murdered by white supremacy to take the heat off of white supremacy and put it right back on black folks. So now the narrative that's being pushed in mainstream media, in the white liberal mainstream media is no longer those thugs, those domestic terrorists, those murderers, those insurrectionists, those traitors that did what they did, those white supremacists that did what they did January 6th at the Capitol. No, 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 no. Now the narrative is we got to get back to these niggas being violent. We got to get back to these niggas being thugs. We got to get back to these niggas being the biggest threat. We got to get back to these niggas being public enemy number one. And how do we do that? By pushing this narrative, by pushing this lie that black folks are now targeting Asian Americans. That's how we do that. And then we get all our coons, we get all our bootlicks, we get all our black puppets, all our black puppet celebrities, all our mixed up biracial and interracial, whatever, uh, uh, black celebrities and all of them to come out and speak against the violence that black folks are committing against Asian Americans and the Asian American community. That's how we get the attention off of white supremacy. That's how we get the attention off of these white folks that were acting on behalf of white supremacy when they stormed the Capitol. And we got to go ahead on, you understand what I'm saying? And a quick Trump so we can get his name you understand what I'm saying? His face and all of that out of the media. So folks won't be reminded of white supremacy. Folks won't be reminded of how bold white supremacy had gotten. And not under Trump. White supremacists had started getting bold under the Obama administration. Obama had gave them the signal. That he wasn't going to do anything for black folks. That he wasn't going to do anything to protect the black community. That he wasn't going to do anything about these race soldiers and all these white supremacists out killing innocent black folks in the street. So that is what actually emboldened the white supremacists. Not Trump. They were already emboldened by the time Trump got there. Trump just fueled them with his rhetoric. But Obama had already given them the green light. With the signing of all of his uh, uh, Blue Lives Alert uh, executive orders and all of this kind of stuff. You notice, you don't see any of those uh, 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 Democratic 
uh, Congress people and representatives and all of that that just two or three weeks ago were just demanding it's got to be an investigation. Something has got to be done. Something has got to be done about white supremacy. Something has got to be done. James Clyburn, uh, 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 Ayanna Presley. Uh, and some of the other ones. You don't hear anything from them now making any demands as far as the capital insurrection is concerned. But what you do hear now is the Asian American representatives and, 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 and actors and, and, and musicians and all of this kind of stuff coming out pushing this bullshit narrative that black folks are targeting Asian Americans. Why? Because they all in line with white supremacy. Again, I already taught you this. We got to say it again. You cannot achieve a certain level of status, a certain level of acceptance in this white supremacy uh, establishment, in this white supremacy system, unless you are willing to align yourself with white supremacy. And you who have aligned yourself with it, makes no difference whether you're black, white, pink, gray, green, red, yellow, or whatever, brown, or whatever. If you have aligned yourself with white supremacy because you want some kind of place, you want some kind of acceptance in this white supremacy system, whether you be a politician, whether you be an actor, whether you be an entertainer, whether you be somebody in music, or, 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 or whether you be an activist, whether you want to start your own organization, or whatever the case may be. In order for you to have any position, any, 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 any pseudo sense of, of power or whatever in this white supremacy system, you have to align yourself with the system. And you have to align yourself with the tenets, the ideas. The mission of the system of white supremacy and the first tenet of white supremacy. The first mission is to protect whiteness at all costs. So that's the reason why you see these boot licking niggas. You understand what I'm saying? And these coons, you understand? And these immigrants and all of these uh, racially ambiguous people and folks all mixed up and all of this. I'm black in this and I'm black in that and LGBT and all of this. The reason why you see these folks always coming out trying to lessen what's really happening with the black community. Trying to lessen the effects of white supremacy on the black community, trying to lessen the effects of slavery on the black community, all of that. The reason why you see them doing that is because they want that position of power or what they think is power or that position of acceptance within the system, the system of white supremacy. And they understand that in order for them to get it and keep it, they have to align themselves with with with, with all the, 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 the mission statement of white supremacy. And the first part of that is you got to protect whiteness at all costs. Even if it costs you your life, you got to protect whiteness. White folks understand that. So that's the reason why Herschel Walker and those like him, Larry Elder and those like him, all of these bootlicks and all these black puppets that we see on TV, the Al Sharptons, the Jesse Jacksons, all of these folks. All of these folks in, in, in entertainment, Nick Cannon, Snoop Dogg, all of these folks we see. That's the reason why they will never come out and they will never really go hard and ever really speak against white supremacy. That's the reason why, and if they mess around and say something that they shouldn't have said, and they get snatched up by the collar by white supremacy, you see them backtracking and apologizing and doing all of this. It's because they understand in order for them to maintain in that system and remain in that system of white sup supremacy, that power structure, because that's what white supremacy is, a global power structure. And they understand that in order for them to stay in that and maintain in that, they have to align themselves with that. Why? Because a house divided against itself can't stand. And white supremacy is not going to let them tear it down from the inside. 
So if they don't want to go along with the white supremacist program, they get kicked out. So that's the reason why now you got all of these black folks coming out talking about, yeah, we need unity and, 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 and yeah, you know, we need to stop the violence and, 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 you know, the Asians don't need to be doing nothing to us and the black folks don't need to be targeting the Asians. You know, you got the Christy Teagans and all the different ones coming out promoting this bullshit and promoting this lie and repeating this lie over and over again. This narrative that hate crimes and all of this kind of stuff against the Asian community are on this, you know. You, you know, just a uh, spiral, just, just, just exploding rise and all of that is because they are a part of the system. They are a part of the white supremacy system and they want to keep being a part of it. Why? Because it offers them good butter biscuits, them nigga trinkets. Now they're only crumbs compared to what the elitists in the white supremacy system enjoy. But they'll settle for them crumbs. And they'll sell you, me, their mama, their daddy, their cousins, or anybody else. They'll sell them out in order for them to keep that little small position, that little small place they have, that little teeny weasy bit of status that they think they have in the white supremacist system, in, within that power structure. So it's time for Foundation of Black Americans to understand this. That's the reason why we don't have anybody that's going to speak up for us. You understand what I'm saying? The Asians want to be a part of it. They want to be honorary white. So they align themselves with white supremacy. The Hispanics, you understand what I'm saying, as a collective, want to be a part of it. They want their spot in the power structure of white supremacy. So they have aligned themselves with it. The Jews... It's, they are separate. They got their own form of supremacy. You understand what I'm saying? But in a lot of instances, yes, they have aligned themselves with it as well. You understand what I'm saying? The, the black immigrants that come over here from the Caribbean, from, 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 from Africa, uh, some of them that come through uh, 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 via Britain and all of that, they align themselves with it. Because they want to be a part of it. They want their little spot and their little teeny weasy niche, a niche or whatever you want to call it, in, in, the, in, the, in the white supremacy power structure. Foundational black Americans, for the most part, as a collective, we're the only people that are not trying to find a little comfortable spot in the white supremacy system. We're trying to get rid of the system. We're trying to totally destroy the system of white supremacy and replace it with a system of justice. That's the reason why we are always on the outside looking in. So foundational black Americans need to understand we're not going to have anybody other than maybe other foundational black Americans, you understand what I'm saying, who are really serious about this thing. We're not going to have people from other groups to stand up for us. We're not going to have people from other groups to stand up against white supremacy and fight for us and fight with us. Now we might have one or two individual people here or there, but as a collective, those groups are not going to abandon white supremacy to come over here and fight with us. Why? Because most of them harbor anti-black racisms and anti-black sentiments as well. That come from their home countries, that come out of their individual cultures. So we can stop expecting any of our black celebrities, any of our black athletes, you understand what I'm saying? Any of our black politicians or any of them to actually stand up against white supremacy and fight alongside us. They're not going to do it. Not the ones that already exist. Not the ones who are already a part of the system. You understand what I'm saying? When you hear somebody talking about you have to become a part of the system and you have to work inside the system to change the system, that's a coon. That's a bootlick. That's somebody that's just trying to find 
their spot within the power structure of white supremacy. They're not really interested in fighting it. Because they already understand that it's a, a, a system that you cannot fight from within. So anytime you get somebody that's handing you that bullshit, whether it be a politician, whether it be a police officer, or, or, or whether it be an entertainer, or any anybody that you get that's handing you that bullshit, that they want to become a part of the system so that they can fight against the system. No, 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 no. It don't work that way. Why? Because once you get in that system, you will either align yourself with it. Or you get kicked out. There is no them allowing you to, to remain a part of that power structure. And you working against the power structure the whole time. They're not going to do that. Once they realize that you're working against that power structure. You're going to either get your shit in line with the power structure. With white supremacy. Or they're going to kick you out. And they got a whole lot of different ways of kicking you out. And ain't none of them good. So we got to understand what this is all about. We got to understand this was all about shifting the narrative. That's the reason why all of a sudden now black folks have become uh, 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 the, course, the, 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 the course of conversation in uh, uh, liberal white media. And mainstream media. We have become the course of conversation again. Why? Because they weren't talking about us. Except for this little vaccine stuff. They weren't talking about us. It wasn't nobody interested in nothing that was going on. Except for what was happening with them folks up there. That was a part of that riot. That coup at the Capitol. But Biden. Through his little memorandum. His little executive order. For, for the Asian Americans. Through that, he changed the course of conversation. Now folks are not so much interested in that anymore as they are now. Oh, now black folks are targeting Asians. Black, black Americans are targeting Asians. Oh, oh black folks are, 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 are beating up and robbing and, 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 and committing all kind of hate crimes against Asians. See, that's the narrative they got. Because they had to get the focus off of white supremacy. White supremacy was taking too much heat. It was taking too many L's. I told you they were ready for white supremacists and white supremacy to go back into the shadows. Biden is there to put the cover back over white supremacy. To put the hiding back over white supremacy. Biden is there to take the focus of the masses off of white supremacy and put it back on black folks. And he started that before he ever got in the White House. That's the reason why all of a sudden there was so much praise for black women. Oh, black women are the backbone of the black, uh, uh, of the Democratic Party. Black women put Biden in the White in the White House. Black women this and black women that. They weren't expecting, they weren't ready for white supremacy to show out the way that it did January the 6th. So they, now they got to take the, 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 the attention of the masses, the attention of the nation off of that whole scene. And the fact that these white folks that claim that Blue Lives Matter you understand what I'm saying? Actually killed a white police officer and ain't nobody being punished for it. Ain't nobody even being charged with the crime. We got to take the focus off of that. We got to take the attention off of that. And we've got to find some kind of way to get that negative attention off of white folk and get it back on black folks. And this is how Biden did it. And now all the Democratic shields 
You understand what I'm saying? The black, all the black faces of white supremacy, all the black puppets for white supremacy, all of them have been sent out. They, they've all got their marching orders and they've been all sent out to push this narrative. This narrative of the rise of hate crimes against Asian Americans and, 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 and Pacific Islanders and it's happening at the hands of black folks. So now, in your mind, you're being trained not to think of those white supremacist rioters when you think of thugs, domestic terrorists, violence, insurrection, Murder. In your mind now, you're being trained to go back to thinking black when you hear all of that. That's how smooth Biden was when he did it. He couldn't use Hispanics or Latino people. He couldn't use them. Because he, we heard him himself tell uh, 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 those so-called black civil rights leaders that they were going to have to learn how to work with Hispanics. You understand what I'm saying? And they're always trying to push this black and brown coalition narrative. They're always trying to push this black and brown. So he couldn't use that. He couldn't use Hispanics. Couldn't use Jews. You understand what I'm saying? Because Jews don't deal with anybody like that. Except for maybe a few white folk. But they really don't deal with anybody like that. He couldn't use uh, 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 the Middle Easterners that come in. Because they usually don't deal with people like that. So the only folks available to him were the Asian Americans. Because he knew how desperate they were for that honorary whiteness anyway. And as you can see, they are willing participants because no sooner than the memorandum came out, all of a sudden now you got all of these Asian American uh, 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 celebrities and, 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 and Congress people and, and politicians and, and all of that coming out, you know, spewing all of this bullshit, doing everything that they can to push this narrative along with the black bootlegs. So I understand that was what that was all about. White America got to see what black America has always known. And that was that white folks are the biggest thugs. They, 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 they the most violent. You understand what I'm saying? They the biggest, uh, 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 they, they, all the domestic terrorism comes from them. All of that. But we've always known that. Because we've always had to deal with them on that level. But for the first time, the, the white masses in the United States got to see white folk doing what white folk do. And, 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 and some of them, it scared the shit out of them. Why? Because they had bought into the bullshit that we are the violent ones. That we are the thugs. That we are the real terrorists in this country. They had bought into that bullshit. But to finally see it come from the people that it, that, that, it, that, it, that it has always come from, it scared the hell out of some of them. So Biden got his orders. You understand what I'm saying? You got to put you got you got to put white supremacy back under cover. You got to put white supremacy back in the shadows. You got to take the focus off of white supremacy. There's too much talk about white supremacy. You understand what I'm saying? There's too much talk about it. There's too much focus on it. The white supremacists have become too bold. Remember, I read where the Proud Boy said. That they thought maybe it was time for them to go uh, uh, back underground, back undercover. You understand what I'm saying? To go quiet. And just not deal with anybody. 
Remember Richard Spencer said when he took his support from Trump and put it behind Joe Biden. That should tell y'all you need to know right there. He said, you know, we're going to step back. We're going to be quiet. You understand what I'm saying? We're going to step back and regroup. But when we come back, we'll come back bigger and better than ever. I'm paraphrasing. So that's Biden's job. Biden's job is to go in and by acting like he was really concerned about white supremacy, you understand what I'm saying? And using the case of where white supremacy actually murdered a black man, basically on national TV in front of the whole world, he used that to take the focus off of white supremacy and put it back on black people who are the victims of white supremacy. The only real victims of white supremacy. And y'all talk about these black folks making chess moves. No, that's a chess move. That's a chess move right there. That's the reason why all of that talk about what they were going to do between January the 17th and January the 20th, that's the reason why they never did anything. Talking about the white supremacist uh, uh, groups and, 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 and militias and all of this kind of stuff. That's the reason why that million um, militia march or whatever they were supposed to have. That's the reason why that never came to fruition. Because they didn't got their orders that it's time to get somewhere and sit down and be quiet. And if you're going to do anything, you do it behind the scenes. And you don't do it as a collective. You don't do it as a group anymore. You understand what I'm saying? Now maybe one or two of you can get together and do whatever you're going to do. And you certainly don't make any moves towards or against the government. Because we got to put the lid on this thing. Because not only are black folks waking up in America, but there are white people that that whole thing woke up. And they had to take a look at it and they had to start looking at things a little differently. So that's the reason why now all of a sudden we have this narrative that black folks are targeting Asian Americans and because of the targeting and the violence and the crime that's coming at Asian Americans the hate crimes that are coming at Asian Americans from black folks they need special protection so see we have to understand what's really going on we have to understand a real chess move when we see one and that was a real chess move because if you don't remember, when Biden first introduced that memorandum against racism and xenophobia and, 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 and discrimination against Asian Americans, when he first announced that during the press conference, he used George Floyd and George Floyd's daughter as a way of, 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 of walking into that. And just by what he was saying about how racism can't be hidden no more and how uh, 2020 had, had, had exposed everybody to it and all that, I'm paraphrasing again. Just, you know, just his tone, just the words that he was using, just him introducing George Floyd and George Floyd's daughter would have made you think that he was getting ready to introduce some kind of policy or executive order or something that had to do with protecting black folks. But no. He used all of that to take the heat off of white supremacy and make black folks not the target again. We've always been the target. But make us again public enemy number one. So now the least kind of little confrontation that you may find yourself having with an Asian American, you may end up finding yourself charged with a hate crime. You may end, your, end up finding yourself arrested and charged with, with, with some kind of discrimination or something against an uh, uh, Asian American. Or better yet, you might find yourself beat up or shot or killed or whatever by that Asian American. And that Asian American will, of course, get off because they can claim that you were committing a hate crime against them. 
So any kind of interaction that black folks have with Asian Americans now is very dangerous for us. That's the reason why, again, we are suggesting that you just don't go, you don't do business with them. And we're not talking about a boycott. We're talking about just scratching them off the list permanently as far as trying to do any kind of business with them. Don't go to their restaurants. Don't go to their nail salons. Don't go to their beauty supplies. Don't go to their little corner stores. Just, just don't do business with them at all. Because now they have been given the incentive to pick a fight with you, knowing that if you defend yourself, you'll end up being the one charged with some kind of crime, more than likely a hate crime. So why even put yourself in that situation when they're not offering you anything that you got to have in life? You ain't got to have weave. And if you do, there are black folks you can get it from. You ain't got to get your nails done. If you do, there are black women that can do your, black men and women that can do your nails. Or you can learn how to do them yourself. Learn how to cook your own Chinese food. Or find somebody else that knows how to cook it and let them teach you or you get it from them. There's nothing that you have to have that comes from them. So why put yourself, why even put yourself in that position? And they have already shown, you understand what I'm saying? That whether they're in the right or not, they going to join forces. They going to get on code with each other and they're going to protect their group. So don't think that just because, oh, well, I've been going here getting my nails done by Ling Ling for the past five or six years. Ain't nothing going to happen. I know all of them girls in there. Okay. Okay. You just happened to find something that were being nice to you because you was giving them the, your money. But let something jump off and see what happens. Oh, I've been getting my hair and going to this beauty supply store for the last three or four years. Child, they good to me. See, that's how black folks carry on. See, other folks don't do business like that. But that's how black folks carry on. We want to have, we want to all of a sudden try to act like we got some kind of personal relationship with folks that are taking our money. That we're simply doing a business transaction with. But go in there and let something jump off. And you'll find out whether they really your friends or not. They, you'll find out whether they really care about you or whether it was just your coin that they were interested in to begin with. But why even put yourself in that predicament for something that you don't have to have? Or something that you can easily get from another source? Remember, historically, we are their economic base. Historically, this ain't something that just started 30, 40 years ago, 50, 60 years ago. Historically, we are their economic base. The foundational black American community, our dollars are the reason why they can send their kids to the best schools, are the reason why they can live in the best exclusive neighborhoods. Our money is the reason why. So we have given our generational wealth that was meant to go to our children. We have given it to them and it's going to their children. It's time for that to stop. Because they have no problem as they have shown. They have no problem participating in this bullshit narrative and trying to push this bullshit narrative that they're being targeted by black folks. They have no place and they don't care what the consequences of that are or, or, what the, or what the consequences of that may be for black folks. They don't care because they don't like you no way. They just want your money. So I had some other stuff that I wanted to talk about. I wanted to talk a little bit about the situation that's going on in Texas. And I'll probably do that in the next um 
in the next broadcast because there's some information about that that um, I want y'all to see. Um, but th this video has gone on long enough. But I just wanted to come and I just wanted to, you know, let y'all make y'all aware of what had happened in Fort Wayne, Indiana with those uh, three young black guys and um, this white, uh, white supremacist because that's all he was. Let's just be real. Because I doubt very seriously if anybody would be dead if he'd had that conference, conference, front confrontation with three white guys. I doubt very seriously anybody would be dead. But then again, you know, you never know. But this is the kind of stuff that's going on behind the scenes. Like I said, they've told white supremacy as a collective to get somewhere and sit down. Because you're doing too much as a group. You know, you're showing yourselves. And you're showing your unity. And you're showing, you know, just how active and just how real white supremacy and these groups and these militias are. So you need to get somewhere and sit down because we're trying to put the lid on this thing. But now if you want to keep on doing, you know, one or two hits here or there, you understand what I'm saying? Behind the scenes, that's fine. Because then it can't really be proven in some cases that white supremacy is behind it. But y'all showing up in droves like this, you understand what I'm saying? Identifying yourself as white supremacist groups and white su and, and, and white extremists and all of this kind of stuff. You understand what I'm saying? You're putting too much, it, it, you know, it's too much focus on white supremacy. That's the reason why we had to get rid of Trump. He was exposing too much. That's the reason why we got Biden in place. Because we need Biden to shift the focus and the attention off of white folks and white supremacy and put it back where we mean for it to be on black people. And their crimes. We got to go back to seeing them as the thugs, as the violent ones. Because now that this narrative is out here and everybody paying attention to this and, 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 and this is all that uh, uh, mainstream media is pushing and all of this, you understand what I'm saying? They can slowly now, just just th that whole uh, 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 thing that happened January the 6th, that, that whole thing can just kind of dissolve. It can just kind of dissolve. And whiteness will walk away without any kind of punishment. But don't, don't, don't fall for the trap that they clearly set for you as a black person. Don't fall for that trap. If this is the way they want to make it, if this is the way that they want to do business, and if this is the way that they want to handle this, okay, then just like Biden made a chess move, you need to make a chess move. And your chess move needs to be, you're not going nowhere talking about unity. You're not going nowhere trying to prove that, that black people don't have a problem with Asians. You're not going nowhere trying to prove, you know, that, 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 that the situation between Asians and black ain't like that. No, you just staying out of the mix. You just ain't going to put yourself in that position. So you're going to stay out of the Asian businesses. You understand what I'm saying? Most of the time, we don't go to their communities. Most of the time, we don't socialize with them. Okay, so the only real interaction that we usually have with them is in business. Okay, well, don't have that interaction. That's your chess move. That's your counter move to this move that Biden made. Since you want to try to act like we such a threat. And you want to try to act like all of a sudden we just mean you so much harm and all of that kind of stuff. One, either why ain't you closing your businesses in our neighborhoods? Or two, why ain't you refusing to serve us? So since we such a threat, how about we just don't do business with you? How about we just stay away from you? How about you stay over there and we'll do business with somebody else over here? And that way you can solve the whole thing. Because if you're not interacting with them, then there's no way that you can be committing any crimes against them. So that's all I got today. Um, like I said, I'll have all these articles listed in the description box. Um, like I said, you can't, like I said, this, the, 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 the story about the white dude in Fort Wayne shooting the three teenagers, you're not going to find that on mainstream media. 
You understand what I'm saying? You're not going to find it anywhere on mainstream media. So I'll have a couple of links to the couple of stories that I could find. I'll have them down in the description box. And then if you want to do some of your own research, of course, please do. Um, I'll also have this uh, story about the zip tie guy and his mom listed down in the description box as well. But um, yeah, we, 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 you know, we got to start making chess moves. It's, it, it's almost too late. You understand what I'm saying? But we got to start making chess moves. We got to start countering their chess moves with real moves, not this bullshit. You understand what I'm saying? Ain't nobody trying to unite with nobody that has already put it out there that you're ready to push this narrative that we're targeting you. So you letting us know that you don't like us. You letting us know that you're ready to push this, that you're ready to, 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 to make us these violent folks, these thugs that are, that are this, you know, just, just, uh, 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 bombarding you with all these hate crimes and all of that. So why would you even want to do business with people like that? Why would you want to even do business with somebody that's making it clear that their whole community is backing this bullshit narrative against you as a black person? So why would you even want to continue to do business with these folks? Especially for something that you ain't got to have. It ain't going to change your life really one way or the other. Whether you have their hair, their nails, their food or whatever. It's not going to change your life one way or the other. Well, actually it might change your life for the better. You might be able to keep some money in your pocket. You understand what I'm saying? It might help with your health. Eating all of that shit that ain't quite what it should be. You see what I'm saying? But anyway, get down in that description box. Do some of your own research. Like I said, have these conversations. Have these conversations. Share these stories. Let folks know what's going on. Let other black people know what's going on behind the scenes. And understand, the only reason why all of a sudden now we're targeting Asian Americans is because Biden was sent in to take the heat off of white supremacy. He was sent in to send white supremacy back to the shadows uh, uh, like it doesn't exist. And put all the tension, all the bad attention and all the focus back on black folks. So understand, it was done purposely. The surface meaning was that he wants to protect Asians and all of this kind of stuff. And he making it clear to black people that he ain't going to do nothing specific for us. Even though he's willing to do plenty of specific stuff for other specific people. That's the surface. Under the surface, you got to dig a little bit deeper. That's the reason why they had up and quit it and, and acquitted Trump. They had they got the hair up and get Trump out of the news. You understand what I'm saying? They got the hair up and get folks' minds off of Trump and all of that. Why? Because Trump was the visual of white supremacy. When you saw Trump, you thought about white supremacy. You thought about racism because of his rhetoric. So they had to hurry up and get Trump out of the media. You understand what I'm saying? They had to hurry up and get and, and get rid of his that, that last impeachment thing. They had to hurry up and get that over with. So that's the reason why they went on head on and acquitted. They knew they, knew they were going to acquit him anyway. You understand what I'm saying? They didn't do that for any real reason. They just did that to, 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 to appease black folks and make black folks think that they were really fighting against white uh, supremacy by doing something against Trump. Come on now. White supremacy existed uh, uh, hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of years before Trump was even thought about. And see, now Trump is gone. So they don't have Trump to blame uh, uh, white supremacy on anymore. So that's the reason why now white supremacy got to be quiet and, and black folks got to go back to being the thugs. You understand what I'm saying? The murderers, the violent ones, the deviants. We got to go back to them. That, that image has to be us now. When you think about domestic terrorists and thugs and mobs and violence and all of that, you can't think about them white folks that you seen seen storming the Capitol. No, 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 no. You got to go back to thinking about what black people. So understand when 
when you see the ultimate bait and switch. Again, he used the actions of white supremacy that murdered George Floyd to cover up for white supremacy and then make the ultimate victim of white supremacy the thug again. And that's black folks. So y'all please like this video. Please share this video. Please have these conversations. You understand what I'm saying? Uh, uh, please subscribe to the channel if you're not already subscribed. Uh, uh, for those of you who've been um, hitting that, uh, that cash app, thank you. I appreciate it from the bottom of my heart. Um, I appreciate all my subscribers, all the folks that comment down in the description box. I mean, in the yeah, that down, comment down in the in the uh, comment section. Uh, uh, please uh, uh, leave your comments down there. Um, Y'all hit that like button now. We need to get these likes up on some of these videos. And um, hit that notification bell so that you can be notified when we upload. Like I said again, if you've got a black business that you want to promote, if you got a black business that you want to, uh, 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 to put them out there on Front Street and let people know about them, hit me up with that information. Um, the email for this channel is in the description box. So, um... Yeah, we because we need to get to we need to get busy promoting black businesses. We need to get busy doing that, promoting black businesses, shouting black businesses out. And like I said, I got some future plans for that. Uh, but I'm I'm working on some stuff. But um, you know, y'all hit that bell notification so you can be notified when we upload videos. And yeah, that's all I got for now. Uh, I'll probably be back maybe late tonight, early tomorrow morning, and we can talk about this situation in Texas a little bit. All right. All right, so y'all stay on code. If you're not on code, get on code. Keep your head on swivel. Pay attention to what's going on around you. As you can see, those three young black men were not paying attention. They were not paying attention, and it cost them their lives. Two of them anyway, because they weren't paying attention. Pay attention. You understand what I'm saying? Stop arguing with these folks. If you're going to knock them out, knock them out and keep it moving. But stop arguing with them. And then turning your back on them. Okay? Stop arguing with these folks and then turning your back on them. Stop believing the rah-rah shit. You understand what I'm saying? Because when they come, they're going to come packing and they're going to come with every intention to kill. So you got to be ready. So like I said, all of this arguing and going back and forth with these folks and all that, stop that. Either knock them out or walk away. But all these arguing with these folks and then turning your back on them, you got to stop. You got to pay attention. Pay attention, black folks. You got to pay attention to what's going on. We will not see another organized movement from white supremacy and these militias and these groups and all of that like we've seen in the capital, we won't see that for a minute. Because that's not what white supremacy wants the nation to be focused on. But, they, but, but they're not going to stop what they've been doing behind the scenes all the time. So you got to be on your P's and Q's. You got to be paying attention. Because you, you you know you 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 can't you, you can't just automatically look at somebody and tell whether they're white supremacists or not. So get off the rah rah stuff. Get off of all that yelling and shouting and screaming and arguing and fussing and raising hell and all of that. Like I said, either you gonna knock them out and be done with. It. I mean, knock them out and be done with it, or you just gonna leave the situation alone. But you can't stand there and argue with these folks and then turn your back on them. You can't do that. You got to pay attention. All right. So y'all keep your heads on swivel. Stay on code. And I'll talk to y'all soon.